Welcome to the Maria Heller Show, the Internet's original podcast. Since the year 2000, always ahead of the curve, always on your side. A true warrior for truth and justice, Maria and her guests leave nothing out and no one is off limits. There is only one truth, the rest is lies. Sit back, enjoy the education with a true daughter of Mother Earth. Sharp New York wit, spiritual knowing, and a very dry sense of humor, Maria will dissect the news and lies to make it all palatable. Education is power. Maria delivers rapid-fire truth like no one else can. Here she is, the mouth that roars, the legendary Maria Heller. Good morning, world. Maria here, alive and kicking. Welcome to our newest uh, monthly segment with Monica Sepulveda. Awaken with Maria and Monica. So today and tomorrow, we have two spiritual shows in a row. Tomorrow, Michael Rick here is on, Joseph Speaks. So we all get a little vacation from this very ugly reality for two days. Yay! Good morning. Yay. Good morning, Monica. <laughs> Good morning, Maria. I always call this the show of M&Ms. We're never playing. <laughs> uh, maybe and with a little nuts. Maybe a little nuts, too. With a little nuts. that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, with the world going the way it is and, you know, young people that didn't live through the 60s, you know, who are horrified over what happened in Charlottesville, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's the old uh, history repeats itself if you don't know it and you don't uh, learn from it. Well, you and I certainly went through it, so we know. That's for sure. That's for sure. And here we are again. Like the song mm -hmm. says, here and we I, are I again. I think this is, this is the reason why I really wanted to do this topic today, because sometimes world of the life happens to us. We can choose what we want in this lifetime, but we also have to choose how to react to it. Oh, yeah. And the topics I brought up today that I wanted to talk about is to help all the listeners get back centered without allowing themselves to be overreacting to this. Yes, send out prayer to those that have been injured or hurt or died. Uh, also, at the same time, keep your energy focused and balanced and centered. And the tools that I brought today are going to help you get there, and they're easy and they're fun. Well, there you go. So what do you suggest we start out with? Chanting? Yeah. Yeah, chanting has, has been around forever. I'm more of a Taoist than anything else, but I've also been into Buddhism. And, uh, you know, I got away from religion like at age 18 when the nuns told me to leave the church because I knew too much. <laughs> uh, lucky you. I know, I know. It's, it's like, wow. Because they used to come to my classes and they said, you've outgrown religion. And I, I was 19. I had a seminar called Seminars on Success, SOS. And... Um, they were there. I had four of them, and a mother superior, so they told me, you have to leave the church. So I did, and thank you very much, you know, and I explored. So I found that one of the things that helped me get centered, there's three really, really powerful chants that I learned, and every time I use them, they always work. But be ready, because the first chant, we actually saw that one for the first time in a movie called What's Got Love to Do With It, and it was the story of Tina Turner. Right. And that's when she left her abusive husband and, and got into Buddhism and started chanting Nom Yoho Rengekyo. And, of course, all the materials I have you can get either through Maria or you can email me. I'm more than happy to send them to you. But that particular chant, you say quickly, Nom Yoho Rengekyo, Nom Yoho Rengekyo, Nom Yoho Rengekyo. And what you do is you say it all in one breath and then you start over. What that particular one does is it really helps you get a sense of self-worth and it connects you to source, which will allow you to succeed in whatever you have your mind set on. In other words, Einstein always said, if you want something, raise your frequency to meet it exactly and you'll get it. So when you do these chants, it raises your vibratory frequency and it's really, really powerful. So this particular one, no Miyoho Rengekyo, um, Sometimes, you know, people don't know how to write them out, which is why I like to provide materials. But this particular chant is really, really good when it comes to career. I had a friend of mine in the news um, who wanted to work for a bigger television station. I said, do this particular chant. Keep, your, keep yourself in that place where you keep visualizing that particular network. Sure enough, he got the job. It was with CBS. Hmm. So uh, the second one is one that's done in Yiddish. And all it means in English is, I am that I am. And in the book of Genesis, it says, whatever you, you know, like the Godhead called itself the I am. 
And what it's saying is that whatever we say after the word I am is how we define ourselves. Mm -hmm. So most people say things like that they're sick or that they're poor or that they're struggling. So that's how they identify themselves. Therefore, they keep themselves in the same place because we know that E equals MC squared, which means energy turns to matter. Our words are energy. They become physical or manifestation of our experience. Um, thoughts are energy, emotions are energy, and most in emotions are from the past. We've got to let those go. So when you say this particular Yiddish um, uh, chant, it's ane yore vave, 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 and then repeat it over and over, and immediately it connects you to that I am. So if you want to say it in English, you can say, I am that I am, I am that I am, I am that I am. And that defines who we really are. You know, there's an old quote that says, know thyself, become thyself, right? Right. Well, this is basically saying the same thing. Once we identify ourselves with the I am, there is no limitation in our lives. Mm -hmm. What happens is we get in the way. We start judging. Well, we really want to, you know, I want to write this book, but who's going to publish it? Well, that's none of our business. The key is to start writing the book, and that which you need shows up. You know, it's like people spend so much effort trying to make things happen, and when we try something, it blocks our, inabil our ability to receive intuitive guidance and messages. So get rid of the word try because it's a waste of time. I learned that back in the, I think it was in the 70s when there was a movie that came out called The Empire Strikes Back. And Yoda said, there is no try, do or do not. Right. And that's when I realized that the word try is a waste of time. Absolutely. When I hear people say, I'm trying to lose weight, I'm trying to do this, I just look at them and say, then don't say you're trying. Okay, <laughs> people it don't. Doesn't even, right. It's like saying, I'm going to pick up this coffee cup. Well, you can't try to pick it up. You either pick up the damn thing or leave it there. Right. You know? But I always say, yeah. you know, when you start a sentence with the word if or try, it's always going to turn out to fail. Oh, it means no. And when people say, oh, I'll try to make it to your party, that means no to me. You're not going to make it, you know. Mm -hmm. The other w useless word I find is hope. I hope this happens. Well, you know right. what, take some personal power and say, this is going to happen, period, end of subject. There is no other option. And then if we, some for some reason, something doesn't work out, just understand that the universe doesn't reject whatever it is that you want. It's just simply redirecting. Mm -hmm. Trust in the process. You know, a lot of people can't let go of that. And I'm one. I, w I was just like that, you know, very control freak. And they can't acquiesce to or contented with something greater that created all of this stuff. I can't create universes. So the third one, which is my favorite, I'm going to tell you a story about this. This one is probably the most, in most powerful one. A lot of people say OM, and OM definitely connects you directly to source. And sometimes what I do is I go to YouTube because it has a ton of tools in YouTube. And I typed in uh, Tibetan monk and chant uh, saying, uh, chanting Om at 110 hertz. Why 110 hertz? Because they have measured the vibratory frequency from all these sacred places around the world, from Cambodia to Stonehenge to you name it, pyramids. They measured the hertz, and they're all vibrating at 110 hertz, which I found to be fascinating. And as you do this, you can, they have actually done experiences where experiences, shoot, That's damn it, slow down. experiments. <laughs> <laughs> That's my dyslexia kicking in. Anyway, cancel, cancel. Um, they have hooked up people to different vibratory frequencies, 90 hertz, 100 hertz, 110 hertz, 120 hertz. And what they did is they, they monitored them and they asked them questions about each one. Every time they came back to 110 hertz, these people felt euphoric, like they were leaving their bodies, that they were connecting to something greater. So there's something about 110 hertz. It's no mistake that each of these sacred places around the world vibrate at the same frequencies. I think these ETs are trying to tell us something, you think? Well, yeah, but you know, while you're talking about that, I'm thinking about a, a post that David uh, I put up this week. Uh, and I, I believe it was something about the cell phone towers being readjusted to 110 hertz. Interesting. And when well, you know I... that they use a lot of that in conjunction with um, chemtrails for mind control, 
it's interesting that that same number, unless I'm wrong, you know, I'm going to have to check David's site to see what that mm-hmm. was because I read so much stuff all the time. Yeah. Uh, but I do remember, you know, what you're talking about, where there were a whole bunch of uh, monks that were chanting for peace. I think there were like 2,000 of them in a, in a group. Mm-hmm. And it really affected change in their part of the world. Oh, yeah, you bet. And when I saw the word Om, and I typed it on YouTube, Om uh, chanting at 110 hertz, I found it. I found it, and what I do is I play it in the background while I'm doing stuff around the house or when I'm reading email, and what it's doing is it's aligning you at the same time. You know, we women like to multitask, and that's one of the best ways. Well, we're built some of these chants go on for an hour. Wow. So <laughs> the third and most powerful chant since the beginning of time is Om Mani Padmi Hum. Now, this one's different. We say that one at a very low pitch and slower. So it sounds like this. Om Mani Padmi Hum. So you say it in one breath. And I noticed that I had like a little rosary just so I could count beads to see how many times I said it. Well, after I got it set, it's like 64 times. I did this chant because I read about it in the 70s. And back in the 70s, we had a store called Joseph Magnin. Do you remember the I Magnins and Joseph Magnins? They closed. No. Oh, I do, actually. Wow, I haven't heard that name in a long time. Uh, Exactly. So we had a Joseph Magnin nearby and an I Magnin. But Joseph Magnin was having a sale for Christmas where they had this huge, like a roulette, not a roulette wheel, one of those wheels that people spin and it lands on a number and it's like a board. It's like a big old circle and that you spin it and um, it lands on a number. Well, these that they had at the store at every single department had a whole bunch of 10% off, 20% off, a few 30s, uh, you know, a few 40s, but not many, and only one 50% off. Uh-huh. So I decided, oh, my gosh, this was 1978, 79. I didn't have a lot of money for Christmas, and I thought, oh, they've got this, that spin for, you know, for a discount. Uh-huh. So I decided to do this particular chant, and I remember I did it 64 times. But I felt so lightheaded and so out of it that all of a sudden this council of nine or ten, like ascended masters showed up, and they were sitting like in a youth shit table, and they said, what can we do for you? And I said, I don't have a lot of money, and I want to be able to buy some nice gifts for my family, and the store has this spin thing that you turn, but it only has 150% off. And so all of a sudden one appeared behind them, but they were all 50% off. And they said to me, now spin this. If you spin this, spin with your left hand of receiving, not the right, and you'll see that it's always going to land on 50. Is that correct? And I said, yes. And they said, so envision every number on that spin, uh, on that wheel, and it's all 50% off, but use your left hand. So I said, okay, thank you very much. And I, I got out of my meditation from that, and I went to the store, I had $300 in my pocket, and I have a, you know, a lot of gifts to buy. And so I spun the wheel with my right hand in the first department, and I did get 30% off. But then I remembered, duh, go to 50%, visualize 50 only. So the next department I went to, um, jewelry department, I spun with my left hand, and it hit 50%. Every time it hits 50%, the PA system announces, so-and-so in jewelry department just hit 50% off, and everybody claps. Then I went to the next department, men's department. I spun it with my left hand and hit another 50. Then they announced my name for the second time. I went to the third department. It was, I forgot what, what it was exactly, but they spun it again. I spun it again, hit another 50. That was three. Now, wow. by this time, people were coming up to me, right? Yeah, because they probably like, wanted to take you to Vegas. <laughs> uh, exactly. And then I went to the fourth one, which is a smaller department. It just had some knickknacks, accessories, and stuff. I spun it, and I got a fourth, 50% off. And I thought, my goodness, this really does work. Mm -hmm. You know, this works. If you visualize something at 50, you're going to get 50. But I attributed to doing that particular chant, which uh, revealed to me those ascended masters that helped me. And so anyway, it was like by the time I was getting out of there, people thought, what are you doing? You know, it's like, how would you do that? It's like, oh, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) What did you say? I'm sorry. I got a little disturbance in the phone. When they said, what are you doing? You said, what? Oh, when I got, yes, 
when people ask me, that's because I got call waiting coming in. Oh. When when people ask me what I'm doing, I just go, I guess it was luck. I didn't oh. want to say anything. Right. This was in the 70s. Right. They wouldn't have been able to handle it. Well, you know, the Om Mane Padme Om is, uh, I remember when I was studying Sai Baba years ago, that's one of his favorites. Oh, it's, it's amazing. You have to say them a little bit differently, though. You know, some are fast, some are slower, and... Uh, anybody, you know, listening to this broadcast can re download and, rec you know, keep your recording so that they know exactly how to say them. Oh, yeah, well, and then I'm going to have you say all three of them slowly, okay, because you okay. kind of sped through them and it made it a little difficult. But I also want people to know that you can go to Monica's website, Monica, M-O-N-N, -N, two N's, I-C-A dot com. There's a link here for a lot of information. Yeah, definitely. And I do have a YouTube video about the count, uh, Sound and color therapy, but it's like om ya get om om reggae kyo om ya get reggae kyo om ya get say already close down om reggae kyo om reggae kyo om reggae kyo om reggae kyo and I actually have sound and I and I take this little mallet and I hit whatever uh, frequency note that I need most. So if I'm like having difficulties with my solar plexus, then I hit the key of C, uh, of E because that vibrates to the solar plexus and it clears out old energy. So I'll hit a key. If I want more intuition, I'll, I'll hit the key of A. And so, oh, this is really important. When you buy your chimes at the store, don't buy cheap ones that clang next to each other or that really disturbs the nervous system. You want to spend money and get some good chimes, spend at least like $75 because those chimes are, um, are tuned at, uh, you know, exact. I always have A minor. I like minor kids, but A minor keeps my intuition open. So I buy those instead. I don't want to bring up the key of C because that can, you know, that's physical. Mm -hmm. And physical aligns to the color of red. And that can cause people to, to get really, you know, annoyed. So you want to stay with the colors above the heart, i.e. green, blue, indigo, and violet. Those are the ones that you want to, you know, utilize. So now my cats are fighting. Oh. <laughs> hey, chill. Anyway, so... So you um, kind of slid into colors and color interpretation, or I like to call it the power of colors, uh, yeah. with the uh, chanting or sound therapy. I'm sorry, my cats are fighting, but you know, I've got to tell you that sound and color, they go hand in hand, so you can see sound and hear color. That makes total sense when you think about it because it's just vibratorial frequencies, but they're all here to help us align and to ascend and to get rid of old toxic emotions that keep us in a place of struggle mentality, depressed, um, that keeps us feeling uh, a sense of doom and, you know, being, um, especially with the stuff happening today. I look at it and see that it's appropriate. Everything that's happening today in this political world is appropriate. Even everything that happened this weekend, unfortunately, lives are lost. But I see it as appropriate because, you know, we're not going back to 1939. Right. We're not going. We're not going to go. But that's not going to happen. And this Joker in the White House will be gone within. Let's see, the August, September, October, November. Within four months, he'll be gone. Okay. I predicted that last year. And whichever method, you know, it could be from a foreign land. It could be from here. It could be his health. It could be impeachment. But he's gone. So um, I want people to know. Relax and just watch the show, the shit show unfold. Um, but in the meantime, take care of your space. So sound is really important, but color is just as important. I don't know if anyone's ever had this experience before. I have, and I'm sure you have too. You wore an outfit one day, and people say, wow, Maria, you look really, really good today. That color is beautiful on you. Right. And you're like, wow, I feel so good with it, you know, and they validated that and then three weeks later you might put on the same outfit nobody says anything you don't feel special and in fact you're saying well what if I gained a couple pounds maybe I look kind of puffy maybe you know it's actually because we don't need that color that day right we, we need a different so what I did in order to stay in touch with the color that I need to wear is I actually redid my closet and colorized it so I put all the reds with the reds all the yellows with the yellows orange with the uh, oranges the greens with the greens the blues with the blues and the uh, indigos and violets, put my black on one side and white on the other side, and then I'll just go into my call and say, what color am I feeling today? That's a great and idea. Say, yeah, and I'll say, you know what? I feel like I need to wear green today. Mm -hmm. Then I build my outfit around the green. Right. 
And it's the best thing in the world because your body is telling you what it needs in order to align that chakra. That's the fourth chakra. That's the heart chakra. So, because color of the, of the heart is actually green. It's not red. Right. Red well, chakra. you know, I intuitively pick out the color I need for the day. Yes, exactly. Uh, and, you know, having been a visual artist, that's kind of easy for me to do. But I think for <laughs> other people, it isn't. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Uh, so I'm looking at your color interpretation chart that you sent me. Uh, yeah. And if anybody wants a copy of it, uh, you know what? I think I can attach this in what I'm sending out to my listeners today. But if you want more information, you could uh, email Monica or myself. We'll send you a copy. Monica, what yeah. is your email? My email is Monica, M-O-N-N-I-C-A, the number is 888 at yahoo.com. But my email address is also on my website, too, monica.com. So oh, all right. uh, I don't know, uh, Maria, if you want to quickly go through these colors and what they mean. Well, yeah, you know, when I was a young girl, I mean, you know, even when you were going for a job, okay, if you were going for a job in New York, uh, and when I say New York, of course, I mean Manhattan, uh, you were always told to make sure you had a splash of red on your outfit, not the whole outfit. But yeah. a splash of red. I don't know how many men I told that to. You know, what in those days, guys used to use uh, handkerchiefs in their pocket to mat, uh, in their lapel pocket to match their tie. And I would say that would be a great spot for red. Yes, you're absolutely correct. Um, that actually, that's my favorite color. Aha! <laughs> uh-huh. I think and that makes sense with you. <laughs> I'm an Aries. I'm a fire sign. You know, and you are too. So. Uh, that's not my favorite color <laughs> okay well my favorite what color is your is, favorite color my favorite color is green oh i love that any color shade too. of green followed by any shade of brown interesting oh my god so there's more of a fall color palette depending on the shade of green though yeah not so much for me to wear they've just always been my favorite colors you know just to me i just mm-hmm. figure it's the color of nature and my favorite part of nature is trees yeah yeah that's true and yeah because, and green represents life which is, makes sense why it's the heart color you know but i like jewel tones i don't like like pastels i like jewel tones oh and i yeah. like bright crayon colors <laughs> See? And I think that for me, it has to do with my Latino blood, you know? Uh-huh. Hablo Espanol y mi mamá es de México. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I like these jewel tones. When you have a little bit more of an olive skin, you know, it works. But, you know, with red, I just want to go through these quickly so people can understand what these colors are about because there's a negative and a positive to both. Right. And people don't realize that this is when I read auras, I actually look at the color of the aura to see what's been going on in their lives. Because I receive three bands around there, and I look at their shoulders and their head. The band closest to you is what you've been going through recently. The second band is like a week ago, and the third band is like two weeks ago, and then they dissipate. So I'm able to tell, oh gosh, if I saw this dark red in the second band, I know that the week before they were really pissed off. Right. You know? And so it's, it, aura reading is a totally different subject, but you still need to know color interpretation to be able to read auras. Mm-hmm. That's separate. I won't go into that today. But the red color is vibrating to the vibratorial frequency of the musical key of C. It's the root chakra. It's life force. It's passion. It's energy, feeling healthy and alive, optimistic, happy, steady, full of vitality, the foundation of the physical body. It stimulates the vital force throughout our body and assists in keeping us grounded to the earth. It influences our immune system, our energy, basic impulses, instincts, endurance, and fight or flight reactions. This chakra is based on the six other chakras, and it deals with the body's survival, including food, shelter, and protection. Uh, The negative part of it, however, is angry. So you can always remember that because I I was so angry I saw red. Right. What if it made these up? But they're real. Anxiety, lack of confidence, the lack of ability to complete things. They may also be leaning towards feeling unloved, masochistic, and again, it vibrates the musical key of C. So... Um, when you look at, let's say, lighting candles, because I used to always buy candles and I had candles made, you know, the red color is, or cranberry, you never like those colors because what happens when you light red candles, and I tried this before several times, people start arguing within 30 minutes. Hmm. 
So you don't keep a flame on red candle. During Christmas, you use the green ones, the white ones, but leave the cherry red ones or cranberries unlit. And if you don't believe me, try it because it does work. The orange is positive, sexual balance is peace, inspiration, blending is peace and love, sexuality, sensuality, physical force, sexual and ardent love, open-mindedness, our ability to yield and co uh, cooperating amicably with other people. The negative side of it is emotional problems and sexual guilt, excesses in food, drugs, and alcohol. The second chakra vibrates to the musical key of D. So if that part is out of alignment, I recommend that people buy these little uh, things that almost have the same kind of, of tonality as a, um, what do you call it, chime. But it's on a little um, piece of wood, and it's got different um, sizes. You take a mallet and hit it. You can, I've seen them in sets of two uh, on, I think, Amazon. But I bought one that had all um, seven musical keys, C, D, E, F, G, A, D. Um, and I've never seen them since then. I bought it at a specialty store. Uh -uh. The yellow one is the one that most people have problems with, you know. The positive um, sign of peace and harmony houses emotions, the capacity to accomplish that which we want, allows us to relax and enjoy these accomplishments. We're able to successfully wield our own power, which attracts prosperity and balance, in turn allowing us to feel safe and secure. We're most, we are most disciplined and better able to organize, able to deal with changes and see that they lead to new and better things. The negative side, which is where I think about 80% of people hang out, unbalanced emotions, lack of courage, fear, which is where the saying came from, yellow belly. Mm. Creates negative influences. The third chakra, it vibrates the musical key of E. So when a person, you, you can literally feel when you're really upset, it, you feel a pit in your stomach. That's where it, it needs to be cleared out. So you can actually listen to music in the key of E, visualize a beautiful color of yellow, and um, well, I'll talk about this in a minute, but even coloring right. you know, makes a big difference. So, right, but this is also a very good and easy way to clear your chakras. Absolutely. The ones from the heart below are the ones that give us problems. The ones from the heart above are the ones that can bring in more positive things. So if we use those colors to counterbalance the other, it really does make a difference. But music, if you know what key it's played in, that wow, that's really powerful. So it brings us to green. This is right in the middle, the green chakra. And uh, green, the positive is growth, healing, creativity, expansion, love, harmony. With the lower and the upper part of the chakras, we are able to strike the balance, which allows for unconditional love, love, allowing us to help others. We feel at peace with ourselves and with the world around us. It aids in rejuvenation, rebirth, success, growth, prosperity, development, and rebirth, bringing peace, uh, bringing balance to all parts of our lives. In turn, it helps us help others, and we become humanitarian, which we need more of that right now, sending out love instead of hate to all the craziness going on with uh, Washington, D.C., except I've been sending out love to those legislators, and I was really pleased when they stopped uh, that guy who thinks he's the president. Uh, when it stopped, whatever he wanted to do has failed. Right. And it's, it's thanks to these legislators, and I've been sending love and healing to them. For him, he can just play out his freaking karma. <laughs> Hey, you know what I, mean? hey, I understand. And the negative part of green is, think about this saying, they were so green with envy. Right. The lack of love, feeling unloved, martyrdom, obsession, repressed emotions, heart chakra is closed. Same vibration, a musical key of F. Blue, positive, spirituality, relaxation, happiness, allows for free communication, helping us to feel centered and happy. It also helps us while we are meditating, uh, to connect with higher guidance. Um, what's interesting is they did some um, brain scans with people that prayed and people that didn't pray, and right in the area of communication, language, and, and speech, that particular part, when it scanned those that pray, were bright red. The other ones that didn't have that kind of interaction with prayer or any meditation, they came back the same color. There's no red in it. So you can actually look that up. Um, Google it and you can see the picture yourself. Uh -huh. I, don't, I have the picture, but I haven't, um, you know, put it on something I can email to people. So anyway, the negative blue is sadness or the expression, I've got the blues, right. depression, disappointment, communication, issues, nervous and frightened, causing introversion, intends to keep our thoughts to ourselves, uh, uh, to, uh, to, to ourselves, to, uh, to oppose any kind of change. The throat, throat chakra is where it's located, it vibrates to the musical key of G. 
And what happens here is when, um, when we are clear, and when I look at an aura and I see the blue with a lot of black running through it, I know that that person is very, very depressed. Right. So you want to clear out and visualize a beautiful you know, color of blue. What I tell people, if you have a hard time visualizing, buy some paper that kids use to draw on in different colors. Right. They come in a pad and then cut little squares out of that shade and just stare at it because staring at something and you can breathe in because there's a book called Color Breathing that's so good. You could actually breathe in the color of salmon, send it right to a knee where you've injured your knee and you need, it takes usually six weeks to heal. It'll cut that in half. And this woman that wrote the book said that an extraterrestrial came to her in her backyard and told her all about the color breathing. So you visualize the color like smoke in front of you and then just breathe it into your nose and send it to the part of the body. And her, uh, she broke her leg and it healed in three weeks. I don't remember the author, but it's called Color, color Breathing. Excellent book. Color the last breathing. one I have, uh, not the last one, second to the last, is Indigo, which is my favorite color. It's the opening of the third eye, Truth Psychic Center, Intuitive Pituitary Pineal Glass. We're able to see RS spirit guides, which help us to look into the past and see into the future, which is all one and the same. We are able to link to our intuition, imagination, visualization, concentrate, have insight, enlightenment, and finely tuned awareness. It also defines fantasy and reality. The negative part of the indigo is a lack of concentration, headaches, making us confused, causes spiritual fatigue, psychological problems, panic attacks, oversensitivity, depression, and it's the sixth chakra vibrating at the key of A. That's why I have ch ch uh, chimes in the key of A. Mm -hmm. Now, when you were minor. talking about that little gadget, you know, the word that came to my mind was a xylophone. Would a xylophone yeah. give people all those tones? Do you remember yes. when we were kids, everybody, I'm sure even you had a set. Do you remember Melody I, Bells? Oh, yeah. So they were all in, you know, different uh, pitches. Yeah, uh, exactly. So I don't know if you can find Melody Bells, and if anybody else remembers what that is, <laughs> guess yeah, what? I mean, you lived at a I, great I wish, time. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I would have, you know, prepared this part for this. Uh, our conversation today because I would have liked to have had a link where people could buy those, you right. know, and I, for some reason, just based well, on that. I'll look, I'll look on Amazon and put a link on my page if I can find it. Uh -huh. but yeah. Anyway, we got to go to a break. So hold on folks. We're going to be coming back with a couple more colors uh, and more color talk. And then I'll give you some of my ideas of what I've used colors for. Okay. Uh, so stay with us. We'll be right back. Hi, Maria here, and I have a message due to the pressure of the times we're living in. I'm calling on all students and millennials to get the education they need to fight the fascism taking over our world. I've made a special subscription offer for students and for seniors on a limited budget. For just $9.99 a month, you can subscribe and get that education. Over 500 hours of real education that's necessary to understand the world, the problems, and the solutions. Remember, knowledge is power. Together, you can change the world, but to do so, you must be informed of what's really going on and have real facts to support you in your endeavors. It's time for all the grandmothers to take a stand and teach the younger generation what their life could be and how to get there. Help me help you. One person cannot do it alone, and the guidance you seek is right here at www.maria.net, M-E-R-I-A.net. Your generation is the generation we've been waiting for, so let me help you. Thanks for listening. Hi, this is Maria Heller. If you're enjoying this show, please consider listening to the rest of it, along with hundreds of other hours of education, by a small subscription on my site. Get over to maria.net, M-E-R-I-A.net. You are the only thing that supports this show. There's no corporate control and there's plenty of education on site. So please consider either a subscription or a donation to keep the work going. There are too many alternative voices out there that are being silenced because of lack of support. So if you don't want MSM to be the only mind-controlling uh, news out there, please consider supporting the people that support you and uh, help us all save something for the future for our children. Thank you so much.